hey, we're having a good time talking about worldview, reality, and faith, and living in the Word of God. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. So I've been talking about worldview that is a perspective of reality. And uh, I've also been saying that you um, don't always require absolute proof to have a belief system or to, or to see something in a particular way and, and actually choose to live that way in your life. And of course, those things become the choices that we make as to how we live our lives. So if I am living my life in a way where I, I accept a belief system, then, then that will end up ruling and governing my life. Oftentimes you will find that it is people that want, want to and are willing to break out of a particular belief system that actually begin to make a lot of change in their lives. So for example, if you have a cultural system that you are born into and that cultural system says, for example, uh, certainly in Africa we have this cultural system that says in order for you to get married, you've got to pay a certain amount of money to the wife's father and mother. And there is a whole negotiation that happens between different sets of groups of parents about the price that will be paid to the girl's parents that you want to marry. Uh, so that is a particular system that is culturally relevant. What's happening more and more in a younger generation of people that's growing up is that they're saying, we, we don't need to actually have that cultural validation of our relationship. And so they want to break free of that system so that it doesn't, uh, so that it doesn't hinder them and hold them back. So that is a cultural system that is, that is based on a set of, it's a worldview. It's a set of accepted beliefs, norms, values that people choose to live by. So oftentimes it's those people that are willing to break out of that, that begin to experience something different and they establish a new pattern and a few new foundation for their lives. Of course, the best thing to, to, to have your worldview on is the Bible and to have that word of God as your foundation. And so last time we were together, I read that scripture. I have come to that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And so if you have a worldview system that says, I'm not sure that God is an abundant God, but the Bible clearly says that he came to give us life more abundantly. So either I judge the word by my experience or my experience judges the word. That's already a spiritual belief system that you must choose. So I don't want to harp on this for too long, but oftentimes I've heard this. My grandmother or I heard somebody or somebody that was around me believed God that they would actually recover from a terminal sickness and that they would not die, and then they died. And so then you say, that experience tells me that you can't always trust the Word of God. So what you've chosen is to say that experience and the reality of that experience has more value to me, is more important to me, and has more substance to me because it's provable than what the Word of God says. Now, the minute I accept that, everything will be judged in my life based on the reality of experience. So the bigger, the better, the more a powerful the experience or the more valid the experience, then you have to say the experience trumps everything else. The experience beats everything else. Whereas actually the Word of God should be the foundation of everything that we see life by. So, there's just a, a, a few things I want to say about this. The book, the Bible says in, the, in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, the just shall live by faith. Now, if I read that scripture, then that is actually absolute proof because the Bible is absolute reality. And so if I say the just, if the Bible says the just shall live by faith, that it means I can, I can live by faith. And then, the, then it's all about my choice, whether I choose this as my reality, which becomes my worldview that I can live by faith. The minute I choose to live by faith, and I choose the other scripture that he wants me to have life in abundance, 
Now I begin to change my worldview that I can live by faith for abundance because he has said both, I want you to have life in abundance and I want you to live by faith. So now I'm going to read you another passage of scripture which says in in Matthew 6 verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you, not to your neighbor, not to someone else, to you. So my first thing is seek first the kingdom of God. So now I have a choice to make. My choice is, do I want to live not seeking the kingdom of God first because I'm reacting and responding to the things that I enjoy in life? Or do I allow seeking the kingdom of God to be my first choice? So sometimes that becomes evident in in cultural, family, business, other circumstances where you would be first, you would be forced to make a choice. I'm going to share with you of a choice that I had to make a long time ago. It was really early days in my marriage and um, uh, I had this cultural pull on me to spend time with the guys. So I was a, I was a sportsman, I was playing a particular sport and my friends were were mostly about either at church or in the sporting community, but you, you build friendship with guys and you're single and, and so you're building a friendship with, with, with guys and I'm, you know, playing sport with men and being involved with men and I'd been involved in the military and so to a large extent, although I was engaging with a lot of uh, women and girls and ladies, you know, my friends were men. And so you build good friendships. And then that girl comes in your life that rocks your world and changes everything about your reality. And so my wife rocked my world. And so I married her. Good news. So now I get married. Now I have a cultural pull. And the cultural pull says, you can be married, but don't give up on your friends. So obviously now you've got to try and reach a balance between how much do I spend with my wife and how much time do I spend with my friends? So obviously when the friends are all have their time to get together and they want me to be present, I've got to make a choice. Who do I do? So more and more I began to make a choice. I want to spend time with my wife, not my friends. So they became aware that I was withdrawing from them in their words because I was making a choice to, to draw closer to my wife. So this is the way I had a worldview. I read a particular passage of scripture in the word of God that said, I must love my wife as Christ loves the church and give myself up for her. Because I let that become my worldview. I let that become my complete reality. When that happened, I began to make choices based on the word of God. And when I made those choices based on the word of God, it it governed my actions. So when my friends asked me to come and join them, I was in a space where I say, no, thank you, I'm joining. So then they began to say, listen, you know, you are uh, no longer the guy that we knew. You're not, you're not uh, the strong man. You're not standing up for yourself. You're not sticking up for yourself. You're not making your own decisions. You're kind of letting your wife rule your decision making. Well, it wasn't that I was seeking permission from my wife to go and spend time with my friends. It was the permission of the word of God that was governing my life. It was what I wanted in a reality in marriage that I wanted out of life that was governing my choices. So as I kept making decisions based on the word of God, guess what happened? My friendship started to do, to wane and dwindle and I got lots of uh angry comments and a lot of words were spoken about it. But actually what happened is that as I put my focus in the right place, my relationship with my wife began to flourish and it began to thrive and it began to become something beautiful, something that I really, really wanted to have in my life. And so as I put the word of God first place, things began to change the way I wanted them to change. Next time we are together, I'm going to talk to you about faith, hope, and love, and prayer. I'm going to talk to you about things and how they impact our reality 
and how they impact our worldview so that we can be proactive and allow our worldview to be about our choices, not just about things that we accept culturally or we accept as other things that are our norms. Enjoy your meditations and some of the responses to this um, in your personal time. Thanks for joining me.